So let's see the operation of the system and the major components what we have. And for this demonstration I'm going to use the protected space to be engine room. So let's consider engine room is going to be flooded with CO2. So we have a lot of nozzles distributed all over the engine room from right from bottom platform to the top platform. We have a lot of CO2 nozzles and uh, these are CO2 sounding alarms. You know you have visual and audible alarms in the C uh, indicating that CO2 is being flooded inside the engine room. And we have a CO2 room which has main CO2 bottles. The number of CO2 bottles totally depends on the gross volume of the engine room and let's forget about the calculation we will deal that in a separate video so let's now concentrate only on the operation and we have the control station or the valve release cabinet or the control cabinet simply so in order to flood CO2 inside the engine room as a matter of fact the master mustering should be done in the master station head count order from the master and then with all confirmations with respect to your company policy the master will give orders to the chief engineer to release the CO2 and it is the chief engineer who has to release the CO2 into the engine room and let's see what are the components inside the valve control station this valve control station can be located at different places but definitely outside the space to be protected. Here the protected space is considered to be the engine room. So you got to have definitely outside the engine room. Otherwise you can't operate in the event of fire inside the engine room. So there are three or many other possibilities. I'll deal with three such possibilities where these has to be located the control station so most of the ships you have two basic places where the control stations are located one is the fire control station and other is the CO2 room itself and the third is just outside the engine room just at the entrance of engine room in fact so the release cabinet has two pilot cylinders and it is enclosed inside a cabinet which has a door. Once the door is open it gives audible and visual alarms and also it might trip some ventilation fans and stop some fuel pumps. It varies depending upon the ship but usually it gives it must give a definitely audible and visual alarm and it should stop the ventilation fans. So we have two bottles out of which we are going to use always only one bottle one bottle is considered to be a spare we are not going to use both the bottles so there is a valve over here you got to open this and then there are two valves one valve if you follow the green line goes and opens the main CO2 bottle valve mechanism the other one if you follow the blue line goes and opens the main distribution valve which is also inside the CO2 room so once I open this valve the CO2 from the bottle comes and stands over here as the chief engineer opens both the valves simultaneously the green line the CO2 goes through the time delay unit the time delay unit produces a time delay of 20 to 30 seconds depending upon the system or the manufacturer and it's not present in all kind of ships so it's not mandatory it's just an optional stuff and this blue line goes to the main distribution valve for the engine room so the time delay unit can be either electrical or a simple empty bottle which creates the time delay of 20 to 30 seconds just the time needed to fill up the bottle the reason is the reason why it's kept as an empty bottle is the CO2 from the pilot bottle takes time to fill up the empty bottle thus this is how the time delay is created and electronically we have a solenoid wall and a timer mechanism which after after let's say 20 seconds time delay it opens the solenoid and thus the CO2 goes and opens the main cylinder unit so 
as the chief engineer opens the CO2 opens the main distribution valve this also has a limit switch so this limit switch gives an indication that the main distribution valve is opened and the, after the time delay the main CO2 bottles with corresponding to the engine room has also been opened thus the CO2 passes through the non-return valve and this non-return valve remember that each cylinder outlet is having a non-return valve it, the CO2 released passes through the non-return valve reaches the main manifold and through the distribution valve it goes to the engine room through gets distributed at the various nozzles to various platforms so as you all know there is a requirement that 85% of the CO2 has to be released within two minutes of operation so that's the requirement so all the pipings and the nozzles and the diameter everything has been calculated so that the requirement has been met the details of the calculation pipe diameter the length and uh, uh, thickness of the pipe etc you can find it in the CO2 manual and it's very clearly explained so that's not scope of this video and let's now concentrate on the main manifold you have a blank you definitely have to have a blank over here so that uh, for any maintenance purpose you can isolate the CO2 bottle section you can blank it and then carry out maintenance on this area and you have an, uh, a valve over here through which you can connect air either from the engine room or from the shore depending whether you are on dry dock or not and on the manifold you also have a pressure gauge indicating whether the line is pressurized or not and one of the main components on the manifold is the relief valve let's say you have released the CO2 and for some reason the main manifold has uh, the distribution valve has not opened uh, the line has to be protected against uh, in other damage so uh, you know like the relief valve will lift and the CO2 will go outside the CO2 room uh, through the free uh, to the free atmosphere you know and the recent generation ships the modern ships have a pressure switch over here this pressure switch whenever there is a small uh, leak or some pressure in the line it detects the pressure and gives an alarm it might be either the CO2 leak alarm or the CO2 release alarm depending on uh, the classification you know the pressure switch can be either calibrated uh, let's say the pressure 1 to 10 bar as leak alarm and after 10 bar it is release alarm it depends on the uh, the automation system of a ship and after that you uh, have the distribution valve which is operated through a piston and this piston I should push up the valve opens up and then the CO2 goes to the engine room and that's it with the simple system now let's concentrate on the actual system which is present on board a ship so this is one such actual system which I had on board a ship as I said we would consider the protected space or the space to be protected as engine room which is isolated and at the protected space entrance we have the valve control station in my last ship I had so we can operate release the CO2 just outside the engine room and conventional in a conventional way you have the valve control station in the CO2 room and one at the fire control station so, so from three places you can flood CO2 inside the engine room let's now concentrate on uh, the fire control station the valve control uh, uh, section you know so we have a key inside the brake glass type which is sealed just break the glass take out the key open the cabinet you can't open it just like that you got to put the key and open the cabinet and as I said once you open the cabinet in my last ship we had the CO2 release alarm and the vent fans will stop and uh, I'm going to open one of these bottles and there is a pressure gauge here once I open the bottle I get a pressure indication over here and just follow the pink line it goes to the two valves and after that it waits for the chief engineer to operate it and once the chief engineer operates both these valves after confirming that the vent fans have stopped quick closing valves are closed and the dampers are shut etc etc so after these two valves have been operated 
let's follow the green line. The green line goes and opens the main valve, main distribution valve to the engine room. And as you see here, you have a check valve over here, or a non return valve over here. So the gas from the pilot cylinder can pass only this way, it can't return this way. And it cannot also go to the other valve control stations. You have an on return valve over here. So it opens the main distribution valve. Similarly, the other line, let's trace the blue line. It goes through a check valve or non return valve through a time delay unit to open the main CO2 bottles in the CO2 room. And as the CO2 is released, follow the red line, and the main distribution valve is open now. And it goes, just goes out, and then the space the engine room space is getting flooded now you have a similar arrangement in the CO2 room and also at the engine room entrance let's assume if I want to operate from the engine room entrance I have to take out the key by breaking the glass open the cabinet I have a similar mechanism over here which is not shown the CO2 alarm will sound the vent fans will stop and I have to uh, shut the quick closing valve remember when you're operating from the engine room entrance somebody has to go to the fire station or the emergency station from where you have to shut the quick closing valves and the emergency stops of blowers pumps dampers everything has to be done or if this arrangement is there you must be capable of having shutting the quick closing valves everything just outside the engine room all arrangements must be nearby so I open the cabinet, confirm everything is stopped and everything is perfect for release of CO2, mustering, order from the captain, the chief engineer operates these two valves. I open the bottle over here, pressure is indicated. Let's follow the green line now. It goes through the check valve non-return and it goes and opens the main distribution valve. And the blue line, it goes through the check valve or a non-return valve, goes to the main uh, uh, through the time delay unit and of course to the CO2 bottles inside the CO2 room and thus the CO2 gets released and through the red line through the distribution valve it goes to the engine room and gets released. So this is how the CO2 system is being operated.